Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Super Ego and we're back with more Alien Isolation. Getting far away. Just gotta get into this suit and we can leave. Were you expecting that, ladies and gentlemen? So we're not going that way. Question is, is Amanda impregnated? It's a very good question, it's a very important question. Ah! 
Oh god. Items because I am incredibly low on flamethrower fuel, which I didn't get. Maybe in here? Nope. Nope. Flare revolver ammo. Flare. Is this like a bunk room? Yeah. I wonder where I was getting out then. Down the ladder we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me throw a fuel, thank you. Flare, shotgun shells. I don't think I'm even going to need the shotgun shells now. Other than aliens, I don't think I encounter any other enemies, and as far as I'm aware, the shotgun does frig all to aliens. Jesus. Yeah, so there's that. Just let me make it through here. where these trams are trying to get to. to another quite horrible part of the game. Jesus Christ, that was close. Fucking hell. Climbing down. <laughs> we Please tell me! 
Nice. Where am I? Okay, that's not too bad. How did it die? Take any help off me. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did a lot. the Tarans. Cool. Save. Why am I on fire? On fire. Health not going down. What the hell? Why am I on fire? Random as hell. Them Jesus. Them some big engines, love.
I see them. Oh, look at what we have here. We have a guest, an alien that's on fire. In space. And my hands are still on fire. Still on fire. seen the original Alien movie will recognise what we're doing. This is the same device that Ellen Ripley used to basically blow up the Nostromo. It, uh, in, in the movie it's what disables the coolant um, and lets the engines overheat and blow up. It's not like a bomb, it's a, why would you have a bomb? It literally just turns off the coolant so the engines can't be cooled down. They get too hot and the blow up. Still on fire. Hello. Berlaine, I'm on my way up to the bridge. So, ladies and gentlemen. Sevastopol Station is no more. No way for us to get rid of our spacesuits. Fun. Oh, 
can't in here, look. Can't take your spacesuit off still. Doors locked. We're going this way. Relaine? And that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Alien Isolation. This is Ripley. Probably one of the best horror games I've ever played, if not the best. This is Ripley. Apparently that's Ripley. I really hope they do a sequel to this game. And the unfortunate thing is most of the team that made it um, are either no longer at Creative Assembly or the team itself has been split up and they're working in different departments, different, in some cases different companies. So, even if we do get a sequel, it's unlikely that it'll have the same feel to it. But you never know. <coughs> um, probably the best thing about this game has got to be the sound design. Specifically relating to the alien itself, and how the development team convey presence in the absence of the alien. It's not there, but you know it's there because you can hear it. Um, and something that's always stuck with me that I've always remembered is something that uh, Christopher Lee said on the actor's commentary for Laws of the Rings and Fellowship of the Ring, which is that Often what you don't see is more suggestive um, and I think he actually uses the word erotic um, than what you do see um, and that's very true with the alien in Alien Isolation and of course the alien in Ridley Scott's original movie. It's a very dark game, it was a very dark movie and you only ever got fleeting glimpses of the alien. I mean, with, with this game, it's it, you're getting a lot more exposure with the a lot more exposure with the alien because you you're in the environment with it, you're avoiding it, you're you're playing stealthily, and you can keep it in view while you move around the the, the environment. So you're gonna see it more often. This is really but when you don't see it, you know it's there, you can hear it's footsteps, you can hear it's breathing, it's growls, you can hear it moving in the vents, metal clanging as it's crawling through the crawl spaces. Um, Signing. Overall the behaviour of the alien for me is really good. Um, the way it prowls the levels and it stalks you. Um, and then when it's actively looking for you, it, it changes its behaviour and it sounds different. Um, that's really, really effective. One thing that I would like to see in a sequel 
is more alien behaviour that we already know of uh, from the, the the movies themselves. Um, at the end of Alien, when Ripley gets on board the Narcissus uh, shuttle, uh, the, the lifeboat they call it at one point, the aliens lying amongst some cables and pipes, just just not moving. Ripley presses a few buttons and it lashes out at her, but it doesn't actually go for her. It's it's quite passive at that point, and then she shits herself and runs to the other side of the cabin. Um, and gets in a small, like, equipment uh, compartment. And she just stares at it. it. It doesn't move. It's just lying in that recess on the other side of the shuttle. And she's just staring at it. I'd love stuff, stuff like that in a sequel where you know it's there. It doesn't know you're there. It's not doing anything. It's just lying dormant. It's lying down. Or it's crouched or some something. Um... And then in, in uh, Aliens and Alien 3, we have instances where the aliens are just static in the environment. In Aliens, when the Marines first go into the hive, uh, I think it's Dietrich, uh, one, of the, one of the female Marines, um, literally walks past an alien embedded into the wall. And then in Alien 3, when Ripley actively goes looking for the alien, um, because she she um, she knows she's infected, infected, she knows she's impregnated, she goes looking for the alien to see what it'll do. And at one point she thinks that she can see it, lying in, in a dark sort of corner of the, the, the sub-levels in the prison. But it's not, it's actually up above amongst the pipes. Just instances like that where it's just there, not doing anything. Because you, you might be wandering around whatever the environment may be in a sequel, say it was another space station. You're just wandering around and suddenly you see it. And you kind of, you crouch and move out of sight. And you, just for that, that brief period, you, you're looking at it thinking, shit, did it see me? And it's not moving, so you're like... No, it, it mustn't have seen me, but maybe it's, maybe it's just biding its time until you turn and walk off, and then it's going to pursue you. Um, and other than scripted moments, um, for the most part, the alien is just walking on two feet through the environment like, like a person would. There's a few scripted moments where we see them on walls, um, particularly when the... Um, when you're in the reactor and, and you set it to overload and it, it blows up. You see them crawling up the sides of the reactor and up against the window that you're, you're looking through. Um, other than those scripted moments, there's, there's no other instances of aliens doing wall walking or ceiling walking. And again, I think that could be used quite effectively in a sequel. Um, there could be an instance where there's no floor. Um, you're looking across effectively a chasm or a pit and you know based on this game you would think oh I'm safe it's on the other side but no it's an alien so it can all of a sudden jump onto the wall and start coming at you or on the ceiling um, or instances where it literally is just crouched sort of crouched on the ceiling or on the wall um, and you could, you know, if you're not looking for that kind of thing, you could just walk right past it. Maybe it sees you, maybe it doesn't leave that doubt, because across the course of an entire game, that those altering behaviours will play with players' expectations. You'll walk past it once, and then when you encounter something like that at another time, you'll think, oh, it's not going to see me and walk past that. It gets you that time. I, th I think that something like that would just be fantastic in a sequel. Um, and anyone who's still listening to me ramble on, ramble on may notice the music here. Uh, these are edited um, tracks from the movie. Uh, this... I'm trying to think where, where this one would be in the movie.
I mean, this bit is clearly on board the Nostromo when the when the crew are waking up. But that that bit just then that was a bit more dramatic. Sounds like when they're doing the the planet transit where the where the Nostromo enters orbit around uh, LV426 or uh, Acheron, as it as it later comes to be known. Um, it's just a, just a, a gorgeous uh, a, a gorgeous soundtrack. Um, A gorgeous score to listen to, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. It's it's been it's been almost two years now since the game came out. Um, September two thousand fourteen, if I remember rightly. Um, who knows? I know that Sega still own the license to the Alien franchise in terms of video game output and if you own a license you want it to you want it to work for you want to make money off it so hopefully they will revisit this this IP thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen but for now this is Super Ego signing off